<laughs> and that's his little brother's t-shirt too. <laughs> Poor friend. <laughs> no, but if if you if you sort of think about it, like um, ev- so I think a lot of people are, I think are probably going to overstake on four, eight, twelve stakes, right? Because they think that they're timing the the actual happening, right? Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. But I've, if you look at the the yeah. run up in twenty seventeen, that was a year and a half after the happening. Exactly. So right. people are exactly. looking at it the wrong time. Exactly. So yeah. So you'd be better off doing like um, six, six or five. Well, not six or five. It's it's like almost in between the, pump. the, the pumps. Wait, wait, wait. The pump is strong. That's brand's new name. The pump. The pump. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay now? No, I'm no. doing three six nine three six nine three for three six nine three days. I love it. I did. I, I did four twenty for four twenty. That's bro. numerology right there. <laughs> for Fran. We can hear you, Fran. We're just messing with you, man. <laughs> Has anyone done five 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 for five five five? Probably oh, yeah. No. No. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I I just throw a couple out there if I get yeah. a little. Extra. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pump that up. In fact, when I look at the graph, it's really funny. You know, I've got everything. Of course, I stay poorly when I got into it, everything's after big payday. Then you get the slang. Do you, I get a little bump here. And I, <laughs> the very last one, I'm like, I, I literally really, don't. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's all right. No, no. Yeah. I, I, just, I, I literally think that the, the, the year tens through fifth through five, five, five don't matter. It doesn't matter what share rate you're getting as long as you're getting in before big payday. So I, I think there's a, like a big game theory thing of actually last day before big payday hitting that five 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 stake and even though the share rate is higher these people are going to emergency end stake for whatever dumb bullshit you know um it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because you were it, it, it's even if the share rate's like two or whatever twice as high you capture so much emergency end stakes over those 15 over those 15.2 years that it's it does it makes it up it makes it up like so and- many fold I never thought of that. And <clears throat> my, my thing, too, is like, okay, at the very end of here, 15 years, who's going to buy it? after <laughs> you kind of like, okay, nobody could stake it anymore. So what else, you know, what's going to happen? I don't know. I mean, I'm wait, sure. wait, wait, wait. You can still stake. You can wait, still wait. stake. So it, it, it doesn't end as far as its staking ability. The contract is forever uh, yeah. as long as Ethereum exists. So you can, so what, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong. Even when it says five five five, at least what I've been doing is anything that's uh, speculation winnings from other DApps or whatever it is that's built on Hex. Yeah, that, that speculation winning uh, every day that that pays out, then I put a five 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 stake, and so mm-hmm. that is thirty bucks, fifty bucks, whatever it is, and that is five 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 every day that I post. So it's been building out like the past 20, 30, 40, 50 days, something like that. That you know, that money is going five by five every time, and that, from what I understand, is even after payday, you can still be doing five 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 today. Mm-hmm. You can, yeah. Hmm. Who the hell's Who's got the jackhammer? <laughs> it's some, I think it's some people shoot. Hey, so there was there was something I want to talk about. I don't know how, how much about it you guys know, but uh, you know, um, Hex Business had had a launch this week, and. Uh, um, I think they're one of the most successful DApps that's that's built on on uh, Hex right now, and they had a successful launch. They did it really quick, and they really engaged with their community. And I just wanted to, to you know give them a shout out for that because I, I watched them closely um, to see because of course in, in this situation where the network goes down and coins get changed and you change exchanges and you change websites and you do all that stuff. I mean, that's an undertaking, man. I was like, I was nervous for those guys. I thought, man, if, if they're not exit scamming, if they're, if they're, you know, this is a hell of a deal that they're putting themselves through right now. And to do it as quickly as they did it and as smooth as they did it, um, says a lot for them and what they're doing. Um, because I've always liked the utility. I, I'm, I'm not going to say that I, I know that that was very risky, that they had a lot of, um, uh, 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 hold on one second, guys. They had a lot of issues with, I'm getting a 
good texture might be coming in here. So let me give him a link real quick. Uh, gosh, dang it. Well, I hear the contract your, is on the, is an immutable code now. It's it, not and that, exactly. Anymore. That was the, that was the risk before that they didn't have an immutable code. They were the counterparty. Right. So yeah, let me send that to good texture. I think that's right. So, um, yeah, so they so they had that issue going on at first. Uh, then they launched um, the the new V two and and moving it over, and there was all kinds of crazy stuff going on in the background. Like literally, people were creating other coins to get people to buy them with their same name and shit mm -hmm. uh, on Uniswap, and people were trying to sell the dead coin. Mm -hmm. Like there was like there was like a period of time where the dead coin you were able to sell it, but I mean it dropped like really quick, and you you had to like really like catch it right at the split second that it, it, it did that. Um, so some people, you know, got to sell or whatever, but I mean, all in all, um, and I think one of their guys was even accused and I don't know if it was, um, there you are. There he <laughs> is. Oh, it's midnight. <laughs> I'm sleepy. <laughs> and so I don't know if it was, it was their, um, one of their guys got accused of being a scammer and I don't know if it was somebody that hacked his account or whatever. Um, and, and so that was going on in the middle of all of it. I mean, it was just yeah, chaos wow. pandemonium and they still launched and they did great. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I, I used their, your, their, their functionality to see how it works and, and it worked and hooked to MetaMask and, and all the things that they said were going to happen. Now they, you can transfer different cr cryptos there. Uh, so you got USDC, uh, DC, you've got uh, hex, you've got hexy and you've got ETH that you can actually trade on their platform, transform on their platform. So I, I, my hat's off to them. They, they, they did a good job on their platform. What's, what's up? Did we wake you up there? Uh, sweetheart? No, he's at work at a call center. <laughs> hey, can can y'all hear me on this thing? Yes. Yeah, dude. Just, yeah. You know what? That thing sounds great. If you just, it's so sensitive that like you said, if you just pull, you don't have to get it close to you. If you pull it away from your beard like that, so it's not rubbing on it. Now talk. How about that? How's that sound? A little closer. Get it a little closer. How about that? Right there, <laughs> baby. That? Oh, I can look, hear your steaks on I'm going to put Bran up here with that? you just so I can hear you talk and look at him. <laughs> <laughs> look, so this oh, headset I'm, I got I'm, right I'm, here. I'm going to pull my. <laughs> this He's headset gonna, I can bite him. So. Uh, Where's RG3 at? He's disappeared. <laughs> he exit scammed us. <laughs> exit scammed his own stream. Yeah. <laughs> look, the story of this headset, though, uh, I look like I am manning a spacecraft right now. And there's a reason for that. There's a good reason for that because we are about to pump. So I have to look Ooh. like I'm manning a spaceship. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Control to the moon. That's right. Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry, Brand. Stick around for a minute, though, Brand. Don't don't go nowhere. We'll pull you back up, buddy. There's I, our I captain. So hey, I I had to see you two together. I had to hear your voice and watch him. It's, it was just like a little thing that I like. Yeah. To do. This sounds kind of weird, RG3. It's not weird. I'm old, dude. I'm old. <laughs> You ain't old. You've already tried everything else. You're experimenting phase. No, no, no. Yeah. Is that a gray bush thing or what? Gray bush? <laughs> you guys. Dude. Oh, my God. Dude, we're all going to be all white hair. Can you imagine in 15 years when we're actually unstaking our 15 years? I'm not. I'm going to look better. I'm going to look better. <laughs> my vibe, baby. Money, money does baby amazing cells. shit, man. And I got a yeah. wife that's like, she's like full and going to show me how to take care of all the, the snips and the cuts. Do you know how that. old the Hex was still, you know, or, or not Hex, Hef, 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 Hugh Hefner, right? So he was like 89 or something like that. And he was still... Three girls, uh, girlfriend, kind of mansion lifestyle. So, you know, God bless my ass. Don't, don't count yourself out for a while. <laughs> That's true. Can you imagine, like, I've got no glasses at that point. My hair is even longer and darker. Oh, hell yeah. I'm get my eyes that. fixed. I'm going to grow my hair out. One's blue, one's green. Um, I'm be <laughs> hey, man, money, money can do amazing things for you. It can yeah. make, make your life a lot different. Yeah. That's for sure.
I think that that that's going to be a news event. I think when when the first who's going to actually claim it's going to become like a big news event who, of these all the of these old accounts who is still around who's going to unstake <laughs> that fifth, the first five by five stake. <laughs> so by that time, I'll probably look like one of the Bar- Bognov twins or something like that. <laughs> all fixed up. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't, I don't know that reference whatever. At the, all. Guys, the two guys are always saying, like, pump it to all the meme. Oh, the yeah, no. we're all going to look oh, like no. that guy. That's yeah. for sure. We'll all have to do it. <laughs> I'll let you stand the life before that, man. They're like in their 70s. They're like 75 or something. Freaking good texture's beard will be down to his knees and shit. Yo, I'm not going to cut it. That's that's the new rule. I'm not going to cut it. Not going to cut it. Until 33 I'm cents, right? Not <laughs> until 33 no. cents? No, thirty three cents is coming pretty soon, y'all. It's not gonna. It's not. That's Damn, not a big. Damn, you Damn, heard it no, first no, here no, on the right Discord there. Syndicate. <laughs> hey, bro. So, 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 riddle me this, Batman. So, thirty three cents, right? Now yeah. we were talking earlier, and we were talking about you know onboarding new people, and and you and I even chatted about it privately in chats about you know Black Swan events or major crypto money moving and and i know it doesn't take a lot of financial energy to move the price up in hex but 33 cents is a big move that's that's quite now you and i had a discussion and i asked you because i can't do the math i'm literally like number dyslexic it's horrible but he i asked you but i know what what is needed to do the math and market cap of or market cap from within crypto moving over to hex to draw a price of 10 20 33 cents did you do any math on that did you do your homework like i asked you to okay no no i have oh, yeah. no math i have a question so i, I don't what, i don't have what, any what is the price if everybody stakes infinite what, what happens goes- to the price if everybody stakes right now just the current holders it goes to a bajillion because there's no sell pressure. Yeah, you know, there's no sell pressure, and there's like three coins left or whatever's out yeah. there. So you want to see the top of coin market cap beat Bitcoin? It would be. Right. It wouldn't even take that percentage. It and would take what fifty percent staked. What would what would make the number go up and just even like wick up and be that number? What would be that news of fifty percent of current coins staked? I mean, once like once Roger Ver spills the beans and tells everybody that he got in early on Hex and all these kind of people start spilling the beans, it's not going to take much. I think he's in the ecosystem for sure. Since he like he was one of the oh, first big all, listings. They're you know, he, he in. was the, one of the first listings. We we got on Bitcoin.com trading. That was the first many, place I ever bought any Hex. How many people have fifteen hundred to a thousand B- BTC? I mean, we're watching those come in like on the regular now. Like exactly. Every Look, few Ro- days, somebody's dropping some serious, and those are some names that are dropping that, or some yep. really old folks. Roger Ver is up in that ecosystem, in that Bitcoin ecosystem, telling all his buddies, "Look, guys, I'm gonna tell you something, and you better listen. There is a big old pump coming to Hex. These massive Bitcoin claims that are coming, we're seeing like." thousands of coins a day thousands a day unbelievable i mean these are like these are not just early adopters these are mega giga whales that are doing this stuff these guys have a lot of pull and for them to be showing their hand and to be showing that they think it's reasonable to collect hex that's a big deal yeah it is a big deal and we haven't talked about that yet and that's been happening for like the last three weeks now three Mm -hmm. about about three weeks that i've been noticing like every once in a while middle of the day bink bink yeah bink bink Mm -hmm. like whoa whoa 200 200 200 200 200 300 300 whoa that's some fat bitcoin claims coming in right there you know what's interesting is the timing of something like that would be very interesting is so if you are a bitcoin whale maybe 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 coins, whatever it might be. And you basically, you know, you are smart enough that you're not going to hit the silly whale penalties and so forth. So you have to imagine that maybe these are broken up and single owner or whatever. But if you say to yourself, I am now auto staked for 12 months, when would be the time that you would choose to actually commit money or commit Bitcoin? Would it be early now and pump the price now or would it be like before those 90% stakes right before those 90% stakes 
uh, unlock because it seems like that would be the better time. You have states that are going to be expiring 12 months away. Why wouldn't you look at the 11 month window to really amplify that game? They, that? They're not sure that it's safe yet. They don't really probably want to dip their toes in the water too much yeah. until they know that it's safe. And they're not going to know that it's safe until it pumps again. And the next pump is going to dwarf the pumps that we've seen before. Because how thing. many of those guys are afraid figure that Richard wants to beat their ass? I mean, he's like, <laughs> if I get in, man, this motherfucker is going to dump on me or some shit. Just put me up, man. So there's some of that fear probably going on in there, too. Did y'all see how casually Richard talks about Hex being the number one coin? Like right. that's that's already what he wants. Like that's already in the cards for him. Hex being number one is 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 I'm not gonna say it's a guarantee to him, but that's what he's after. No question. Yeah. I yeah we and I yeah. think that's what we I talked about it earlier in the stream. What we all saw in him was an honesty and a deep desire to build something good. And not to, you know, he wasn't talking smoke and mirrors. He wasn't talking around issues. He wasn't talking um, like he had something to hide. He was always very transparent, very upfront, laid all the ground rules out in the front. You know, hey, this is going to go to zero. It could go to zero. You yeah. know, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's going to, you know, pump. But this is how I built it. This is how cryptos are built. This is how I built this one. It's modeled after all of these very successful moves in crypto and it's everything encompassed and look at what else my brilliant ass did to it to make it even better, you know, and yeah. then other things happened, which made it exciting like Uniswap, you know, yeah. and all and, of those and The coincidence of Uniswap coming online at the same time, like if that is actually a coincidence yeah. and that actually wasn't planned, like that is some cosmic level coincidence Shit. because yeah. because because that system allows hex to get hyper pumped you know if, if we did not have mm. uniswap and we were only trading on like you know hit hit btc or some stuff like that i don't i don't think the same uh i don't know that the same fundamentals to price pumping would be out there it'd be a completely different deal that's that mm -hmm. is for sure now on the other hand if it was planned, if it was coordinated, if it is something that we don't know nothing about and it's super, super secret, holy fucking shit. You know, you know what I mean? Or, Who's behind that one yeah. if that's the case? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we don't even know who wrote the thing. We, we're, mm -hmm. we're being kept in the dark on who actually programmed it. You know, Hexologist did some, some amazing journalism earlier asking, uh, hey, Richard, can you tell me who wrote it? And Richard's like, nope. <laughs> you know what's interesting is we walked through this uh, FUD cycle in 2017 when Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, BSV, the, the, the hash wars, all of that stuff. And that was basically just a, a fork or tribes trying to steal members from other tribes saying, oh, we are the real, we are the real or whatever that whole uh, story mm -hmm. was in that narrative. That every YouTube influencer, Ivan and so forth, were commenting all the time and you know, kind of wallowed through that period. But differently, Hex is, is unique and completely unique uh, in so many different ways that to get to number one, their strategy was to just maybe amplify or t tweak one aspect of the Bitcoin core model and say, we will be faster we will have yeah. to work. We'll, our transactions will happen differently, but yeah. almost identical versus something that really can get to the <laughs> top of that coin market cap rating. Exactly. I mean, look at, look at, I'm sorry, Moses, but look at Litecoin. Total freaking garbage. All it is, game, is man. <laughs> it's just a, like, like number one, Bitcoin is total garbage in itself. So basically what they did was they took Bitcoin and they cloned it and then they reduced the amount of pollution that it was creating, which the killer app of Bitcoin is to create a shitload of pollution. Like that's what it's good at. And, 
And if you're not, if you're a fork of Bitcoin and you're not creating that much pollution, you're not doing the job well. Like the more pollu- like that's how you measure the greatness of a Bitcoin fork is how much pollution it is creating. And Litecoin fails at that. They're not creating that much pollution. So they're it's, it's like, what's the point? I don't get it. <laughs> the hash rate's increasing every day, I guess. <laughs> it actually went up twenty five percent the other day, which is pretty. Well, anyway, you guys remember that movie from the nineties, Multiplicity, where every time it clones himself, the clone oh, clones yeah. itself, and it gets dumber and dumber and dumber. Yeah. That's what a lot of these coins have done with themselves over the last three years. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, the thing is, it was kind of competition of member. Like my tribe will be bigger than your tribe because we're mm-hmm. going to members of your tribe to my side, versus completely changing the culture it's not just tribalism it's changing the culture of it's not trade it until you make it because you've got a bigger stack you took from other people it's stake it because the mathematics are showing that you will have a bigger stack you know man and those mathematics are amazing i saw somebody post in the chat a little while ago you know that's <laughs> that simulation that kyle did you know that was 80x in 10 years and then kyle himself said well you know, uh, we've been seeing a lot more penalties than my uh, than my simulation accounted for. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, you know, I think that ADX is actually going to end up being a little low. And then that doesn't even take into account the extra five years that somebody might. So, you know, if, if you mm-hmm. actually take a 15 year stake, those last five years are going to have enormous gains compared to the first little bit it's just because you're going to be like this massive whale in a in a tuna fish pond i mean it's going to be nuts so now and another thing that i was i was thinking about too is when when you emergency end stake before big payday that looks like it hurts a lot more than what's going to emergency end stake Mm -hmm. after big payday so people that adopt after big payday get in get in for a period of time and they're like oh man and they got to get out they want to get out. They're looking for a pump and a get out. Um, you know, I think that that's going to happen more often than we're seeing now. I think that the big payday is deterring people from actually wanting to emergency end stake right now than what we're going to see in the future. I we're, agree with that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to lose half our 10-year stakes by year five. I can't I can, wait. I mean, it's, it's just, 10 it's years is a long time for a young guy that's for sure yeah yeah hey, but, you but, have a brand standing by i'm gonna step out for a minute so if he could talk I see all right you. bud have all a good right, one man thanks good for seeing you funny I'll, I'll hop on the stream yeah, always days, always awesome I'll come back you, but just when there's space again okay. all right let's bring a super sexy especially around your sex because there is sexy Bro, we could wow. we could hear you the whole time. Okay, we big bomb, big bomb, well, dude. Because I'm not using I'm not using this thing anymore. We're we're going <laughs> we're going full video game on us, huh? <laughs> so hey, how you guys uh, how do you guys like the stream with Richard Hart and the Hexologist? What do you think uh, of that? I was so busy I didn't get to see it. I can't I'm gonna I'm gonna cuddle up with a with my, my pillow tonight yeah. and, and turn it on and listen. I think me and Archie through just listening about gaming it halfway through like Yeah, we got to the that. end of it yeah. and we were we were getting ready for the show and the end of it was about gaming and we were like, Oh man, we missed all the juicy shit. You know, and I saw a couple of good textures text like uh, how he was doing some awesome uh um, uh, reporting and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Richard spilled the beans. You know, some he said something ooh, which I already. I, already I know knew. you caught. So what did you I mean, catch? I mean, our, I mean, this is not this is not new information to me, of course. But he revealed that thirty three was his favorite number. Now I already knew this, but it was nice for him to actually come out and confirm so, what I thought I already knew. So let me jump in there and say <laughs> something. So, so that lends a lot because you you mentioned that a while back ago, and you you've been talking about it like you talk about your hollow moon and your other conspiracies and all that other <laughs> shit, like your Nostradamus self does. But I mean, you 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 did say that, bro, and and now that yeah. he's admitted it, that gives you a lot of credibility. I, there might be wow. a hollow moon up there somehow. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to believe in you, my my sergeant at arms. I'm starting to believe it. You believe in God? It falls real. <laughs> We got to get this uh, penny in July. Look, if the penny in July happens the way that I'm that I'm thinking, then everything else is probably going to happen the same way. Yeah, and and then and in secret, you told me it's it may and it could be more than thirty three cents. I won't I won't hold you to that, but I think he's. Uh, I mean, we got to talk to Texas, man. We got a podcast <laughs> one of these days, dude. I I gotta I gotta pick your brain, man. <laughs> hey, Texas, do you think 
Do you think it's going to be late July or mid July? Uh, uh, are you my, looking you at know. exiting there, buddy? Huh? huh? <laughs> no, no, dude. Hey, I got steaks. You don't give me a pity now, dude. Hey, listen, I'm 23, like the other kid the other day uh, who was doing the hex toys, and I've got 15 year steaks, 10 year steaks, five year steaks. Yeah. You know, I got the whole nine yards. Right guy, yeah, right uh, guy. Right guy, man. Yeah, I don't know what part of July. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I get, every time I do one of these um, predictions, I give myself a ton of room for error. Like I'm, I, I'm actually trying to be really conservative with it. So I'm gonna say the last day of July is still is still ball game. You know, I'm saying Fourth of July. Just I don't see fireworks, I, baby. The third, yeah, man. the third. Maybe. It's gonna be on the third. Okay. okay. I mean, we could start seeing a little bit of a lift off around then. It's, it's possible. Yeah, like yeah. half a penny, probably, huh? Uh, yeah, it could, it could start Hex, picking up. I think he's watching, guys. Hexologist. I think he's uh might be watching the stream. Maybe his old his old lady came home and kicked him off of the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, man. He's got a family, you know. He's got a, <laughs> she was a, she was at the baby shower and and. He, he he heard her drive up the driveway, so he had to bail. He's like, "Oh shit!" He turned the computer off. <laughs> he t- he sent me a message. Said, "Dude, old lady, just pull up in the freaking driveway. I gotta go, man. I'm in trouble." <laughs> he'd been streaming with Richard for like three, four hours, so he's like, "Shit, I had to go, man. I had to go." <laughs> hey, so Crypto Orange, I ain't gonna yeah. let you sit there and just stay quiet, bro. No, no problem, man. It's your it's your turn. We we always get on. We, we always. I mean, every stream we no, probably. No. Do a little price prediction thing. So, no, I just want to say a quick hello to Good Texture and uh, uh, Brand. I haven't met you both yet. And nice to meet you, man. Nice so, so, you. so, just to let you know, all these guys nice have their own you. streams. Um, Brand just started his own stream. He's doing his thing. Yeah. Um, he sits in his living room with his t-shirt off and and <laughs> drinks beer and flexes. No, and, I'll wear the, hey, I'll wear the purple shirt or the pink shirt or yeah. the standard shirt. Whatever and his squat wants. videos on his YouTube channel. I love yeah. <laughs> And good texture is Hexodomus and my sergeant at arms. So everybody, yeah. all the rest of you guys, fuck off. He's he's my dude. And he's he's hanging with us. And whenever I need some muscle, I call on good texture. Um, yeah. And then. If He's got his own stream. And then Litecoin Moses, too. Uh, this chap right here, man, he's everywhere in crypto. He's like the creepy, crawly, freaking critter out there. He's, he's in every chat room. I mean, I, I see his shit everywhere. And then he, he, he interviews and does a lot of shows. And then he's my sidekick here. Helps out a lot with, with yeah. the Discourse Syndicate. And we are, we're always talking. And, I mean, he, he, gets, he, he gets on the show and he does, like, some – Every once in a while, he does rants, but I'm telling you, there ain't nothing like listening to Litecoin than like if you're sitting here with him at night on when you got him on the headphones, he yeah. will go, he will talk for a half hour on a on a theory that he's got and just go into it and go into it and go into it and go into it. <laughs> They're coming true. They're coming but, true. But but he's got a bunch of streams, and and so all these guys in here are streaming right now. And That's very cool. kinetics, what about you, man? You gonna start streaming something, or you just gonna come hang out with us all the time, be a cutthroat? I'm just going to ride on your coattails. No, I thought about it. I'm either too busy or too lazy. I'm not (laughs) saying fun. It's yeah, it's definitely not for the lazy. I'm telling you, man, there ain't nothing like having to freaking put thumbnails together. And, yeah, you know, do I, I don't do what Hexo does. I mean, that guy is like a fucking machine. I can't believe that he does every day. He does like comes up with some brilliant freaking idea and then puts it together and it's funny yeah. as shit. And it doesn't look like he just like threw it together. He really like thinks about this shit, puts it together, and then his content too. I mean, the guy is. Yeah. Gosh, man, I, I'm like, you know, I got a man crush on my on my on my hex self. This has turned into be He's a got really a gay stream, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just coming from you. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm I'm all right with it. I'm I'm cool with my. my Today has been like super crazy. Um, Sex day. I mean, like Richard's over there talking about uh, toilet paper rolls and all this kind of stuff. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I got I got I I missed it. Obviously, the inside joke, but Yoda sent me a. <laughs> freaking meme about some bit what fits in a toilet paper roll or something like that i'm like oh boy i can just see where yeah. that one's going. yeah yeah richard R- richard just went straight up on stream and just said flatly without any innuendos or anything he just said straight up yeah guys can't fit in a toilet paper roll <laughs> said it straight up yeah 
I felt I felt him on that trying to get trying to keep the weight down and everything too because like man when I hurt my neck and everything man I've been out of commission out of the gym for like six months and I was like I gained I started gaining like 20 pounds you know I got another prediction I think Richard is actually going to start is probably going to lose a significant amount of weight within the next six months I think he's probably within six months he's going to look like a different person I just lost 10 uh, I I, uh, wow. I went on a low you. carb diet and uh, I'm I'm gonna drop a few more. Then I'm gonna start running my macros and and doing a different diet because I don't I, the the low carb diet takes it off of me quick because us men man we can when, yeah. when you start getting up in age 30 40 50 <laughs> the weight just doesn't doesn't go away man you got to keep at it but the Atkins diet for some reason or low carb diet I can take it off quick but then. You lose a lot of muscle too at that point, mm-hmm. and then you have you to lose start. you lose muscle eating meat. How is that possible? You no, know, you do. You you don't have carbohydrates. Your your muscles I don't. start. To, I'm muscle. I'm doing get, as get, as far as muscle goes. I'm doing. I, I've been on a pure meat carnivore diet for about sixteen months, and muscle wise, I'm doing better than I've ever done. Well, it might okay. be the amount of proteins that you're eating. Um, but like I said, and, and it's also your age at, at 50, um, your body doesn't want to hold that muscle as easily. You, you literally have to work hard and you have to have the right macros in your diet. You have to have the right amount of carbs, proteins, uh, and fats in your diet. Because if I go on a low carb diet, uh, my muscle starts to dwindle. I mean, I, I, mm. I literally start to dwindle a little bit. And I start to, it, it's, it's just old guy syndrome. Take creatine. It's, it's take creatine, how much more water. Like, oh, how many pounds? Me, I take creatine, believe me. I take how many pounds of meat are you eating a day when you're losing this muscle? Um, I'm probably doing, right now, I'm probably eating close to pound and a half maybe two pounds that's, not that, a lot. that's why that's why you're losing muscle you're not eating enough that's a very small that's a very small amount of food like if i'm actually working out and doing stuff around the farm i have to eat minimum three pounds a day or i'm gonna I just not only will i start losing weight but i'll um uh, i won't be able to gain any muscle if i'm not eating three pounds a day at least yeah well right now i'm streaming and watching freaking Charts Does, you guys do are. eggs count in towards <laughs> your uh, your carnivore diet? No? Oh, abs- I mean, uh, yeah. well, yeah, Does eggs, that- uh, eggs, dairy, pork, uh, lamb, sheep, uh, oh, cheese, lamb. cheese, milk, cream, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause that's how I kept a lot of muscle on my. It's a great food. diet. Yeah, it's, it's a great. Good. It's it's so good. <laughs> yeah. I, I did this. I did this one diet where um, this where I got the most cuttest was like I was like sixteen eggs a day. And I was doing like a one pound, one or two. It, it was like ribeye. Essentially, I was eating like one or two pound ribeyes. And then yeah. I, j- I lost a ton of fat on my body, but I kept a lot of the muscle. But that was me coming down from like 280 pounds down yeah. to like maybe like 235 or so. But I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, when, once you start, once you hit past that 40 mark, uh, 40, 45 years old, your muscle changes. It, it, it changes on you. And yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't want to stick as easy and fat Boy, fat just loves you. Fat freaking loves you. That's what and, the testosterone's uh, for, right? It's yeah. getting a nice shot of tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, b- I believe you. I believe you 100. percent But I also think it's probably it 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 helps that you're not eating enough. Yeah, you no, you're right. You're right. I don't. I need mean, my appetite's very suppressed too when I go on it's, straight. Yeah, eating. it's 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 hard to eat a lot on a carnivore diet. Like sometimes you have because you're not hungry. Kind of, you're just like kind of like yeah, eh, you know. But when you eat carbs, you're like constantly like run into the refrigerator like oh more more bread more bread more <laughs> oh, oh, oh. sweets oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah ice cream thing. bacon's yeah, I, always awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I love I love the the carnivore bacon man. You can put bacon on anything. So here we go off on another tangent. How does this work? does this have to we do? We were with talking it? about Richard Hart that he had like an epiphany and that he was going to lose a lot of weight uh, with someone's prediction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I hope so because uh, he's he's definitely gained some over this. He's probably he's probably relaxing right now after finally launching this thing and you know getting some. No, dude. He said yeah. he was like like more involved in the community like than ever it seemed like uh when it comes to like the the dev projects on the telegram and whatnot i mean just from what i've gathered it's yeah but how like, active do you like, get when you're sitting on the computer talking to everybody all the time you know what I mean? yeah like, probably, probably not at all <laughs> probably yeah. in the quarantine shit with everybody you know i don't know where exactly mm-hmm. he is but um you know he's 
you know, under quarantine, you're not going out walking, doing anything, you know. And, and, Lack of sleep. I know I lost all my sexy man. I started getting fat as hell. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, Sean Baker. He, Sean Baker is 53 years old. Uh, his his Twitter handle is S Baker MD, and he's 53 years old. And he's been on a nothing but carnivore diet for three years, and the guy is just amazing looking. He takes, amazing. Uh, takes care of himself. Oh, the doctor that was on Joe Rogan's. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He deadlift a good amount. Yeah. yeah, we're the same age. And well, I'd argue that health is part of the whole hex community because you're, you, you're absolutely you've got you've got your financial well being hopefully taken care of with hex, but then you got to think about your physical well being and your and your mental, and some might even argue the spiritual too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and yeah. and and all of those things coming together is really, in my opinion, what kind of helps you with your your spiritual well being, and everybody mm-hmm. has idea of what that is whether it means something to them or not and but in some way it does you know and and it's all of those things in life being kind of put together and maybe it's just freedom for you and and mm-hmm. i've always said you know that everybody says you know money don't buy you happiness well money buys you options mm-hmm. options buy you freedom and freedom buys you happiness so mm-hmm. having that all in, in place and in and together is is the the uh mm-hmm. you know the areas of life you need to you know get together but finances is a big deal man oh yeah i mean speaking and- speaking of that um did any of you guys see uh funding jim's video today on the kid that committed suicide that tone bays was making uh, fun of we, on twitter i have it uh, earlier. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. no no it's okay <laughs> yeah we we had a little talk about that already i quite a rant i got a little <laughs> bit of a ranty emotional about it but uh okay you know. it was fair it was fair though because it was some bullshit honestly yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, agreed. The worst part was the response. That that yeah, is yeah. what is is. Uh, I I can't I can't accept anything from that guy anymore because of his response. He fucking weaseled out of his response. He had a chance to make it right. Mm-hmm. You know, retract. I fucked up. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said this, but he didn't. And right. then his stupid yeah. fucking community backed him on it. Yeah. You know, the Twitter tweets yeah. after him. Oh, he's a good guy. Uh, he didn't make no mistake. Yeah, I think it's funny too. Now, yeah, fuck you guys, man. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like people that can actually learn from their mistakes. I mean, Richard. I've said this before, but Richard used to like promote uh, trading and like uh, would do his ref link and whatnot. And like now, like with the you know with hex being complete and whatnot, he kind of created it to uh, to kind of just stake it and let that do the the work. You know, like. Can you imagine how many people that may be over leveraged and uh, if they would have just found a project like Hex maybe um, and got involved in that instead of like over leveraging themselves, they might be not wanting to kill themselves, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the other thing is, is the kid didn't do that. No the problem. It was a, it was a freaking glitch. <laughs> That's glitch, the real, yeah. real, real exactly. sad part of his yeah. situation was that, it was a it was a mistake that he didn't make. It was it was a computer glitch, and and I mean that's just that's horrendous. It's 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 just yeah. you know being a kid, I could see that really really you know upsetting him to see something like that. You know somebody like you RG three, you would probably see that and be like, what what is this? You know you might you might just be able to shrug it off, but a kid yeah. like that, he couldn't shrug it off. No. No, no. Was he shorting anything? Why it showed that? No, no, no. He, well, he may have. I don't know. He was doing some type of margin trading, I think. And then that right uh, there. Yeah. But the, it glitched out and said he lost 750K. Yeah. And it wasn't correct. The num- number was wrong. Yeah, right. their, their, their system it was a system error. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he wrote a letter and stepped in front of the train, which yeah. is really, really horrid. So sad. Well, we, yeah. Hey, RG3, I'll, I'll be right back. I gotta, I gotta go eat dinner. Right uh, now. Uh-huh. I gotta go eat some steak. You gotta go over there with Hexo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. I'll be back if this this stream should last another three more hours. So I'll be back. I'm down. I'm totally down. <laughs> All right, peace. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, just just in general, like how many uh, how many people in the uh, other cryptocurrency communities can we expose to hacks? You know, like once. You know, to Good Texture's point, the the favorite number thirty three. You know, like say if we do pump to that, um, you know, however long it takes. Like, when are the other people from the Digibyte, the Litecoin, the BSV, Bcash? Like, 
Monero? Like, when are those guys going to jump in? Like, when do you think it's going to be enough pressure for them to be like, okay, like, let's take a little bit of a look into this instead of calling it scam, you know? When the crypto YouTubers they follow decide to start following too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot probably has to align. And, you know, nobody's mentioned Bitcoin too because, you know, if we get a huge bump with Bitcoin, no that's, you know, that's going to excel. You know, I want someone to expose a, an inflation bug with Bitcoin and then see where the market goes from there. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I don't know that, that outside money really matters that much, though. Like the way that we don't really need to have the onboarding of the entire crypto community, the way that Uniswap is built up and the way that the liquidity is so tiny that you could really have just a few directed whales do this thing i mean it doesn't really it doesn't take an entire ecosystem to pump this thing it really doesn't it's, that's true. It's, it's a good point one whale that had like a thousand ETH worth something like that right that doubled the price like i don't i don't know it, it might take it may maybe it takes twenty thousand ETH to do it but still twenty thousand ETH compared to the market cap that that could pump it to is just mm -hmm. absolutely nothing yeah, yeah, I know. yeah that's five million dollars that's only five million dollars <laughs> yeah it's not much i mean you don't you don't need and so what happens is this pumping is going to do all the work that the youtubers should have done mm -hmm. it's going to do all their work for them because there's only so much pumpage that any um person with an iq above 70 can watch before mm -hmm. they say okay whoa 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 uh, uh um, I'm, I'm getting a little scared here i need to uh you know i need to buy this thing there's only so much people can take yeah, yeah. absolutely well and then what'd be great is what we discussed in the comments on your video earlier today good textures if there is uh, a, a big financial institution or a big whale out there that isn't that doesn't care about the speculative value, but decides to put that all on Uniswap for the trading fees and provide liquidity, yeah, then I think at that point in time, then you you lock that price into place. Yeah, but where are they going to get it from? They got to get it. They don't even have it. They got to buy it if they want to. Got to be that. AA, man. That's and where the discount for the big whales are if you're buying in bulk. Is that AA? Yeah, they, they can. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> we don't actually know if let, let, let me speak speculatively and y'all don't uh, y'all don't uh, set me on fire or anything for saying <laughs> this. But let me speak speculatively and just assume that some shadow entity is actually recycling Ethereum into the AA. If um, if somebody is let's say that a massive whale is trying to get coins out of the AA. This, this potential shadow entity that's recycling coins can just price them out. They can they can dump fifty thousand ETH per day into the AA and just and and basically sm uh, smother them so that they can't actually pull anything out of it. Well, I'd like to see it happen for a couple of days and and witness it from this end. <laughs> I'd like to see it happen. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to take an entire ecosystem. It's not. We're not going to have to onboard, you know, all of the Monero and all of the I Litecoin agree. people because a lot of those okay, people are just. Yeah. A lot of those people are absolutely religious in nature. Now, I do think that the Ripple XRP community that a lot of those people might jump ship because um, they're tired of watching their coin go to nothing. They really are. I, I get DMs from these Ripple XRP guys every day asking me, I mean, multiple a day asking me how to buy hex and, you know, uh -huh. thank you for showing them all this kind of stuff. And these XRP people, they're these ripple people, they're tired and they're probably either the biggest or like the second biggest crypto community on Twitter itself. And sure. I believe there's, that there's a whole lot of them. Is that why you've got okay. the soldier with the hex symbol pulling up the yeah, XRP no, guy? Yeah, like that. no, that that's very strategic. Like people will that's talk nice. about they want to, people will talk about that they want to bring in the IOTA community and the you know mm -hmm. the Zcash community. No, screw all those people. It's very strategic to go after the Ripple community because they are massive. They are one of the largest communities. They've got um, a very varied demographic when it comes and to like male. They're lockstep too. They're locksteppers. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. And they've been taking sweat for years. I mean, Ripple's been, what, 2013 or something? So they, they've been in the, 2012. The for a long time. Is it 12? Yeah. They were, they, yeah, Ripple came out in 2012. Actually, Ripple was originally written uh, by Ryan Fugger back in like 2004. I mean, it's really old stuff. It, it's not even, it's not even uh, built the same way that Bitcoin is. It's ancient. Uh, Roger Veer was, he was 
at least an early staker and buyer of Ripple, I think. I mean, he's basically Roger Beer's been across every big top 10 coin um, and a holder. You know, so I think he has yeah. more influence than we even just realized. And you know, his buddies are buying Hex right now. They got to be. Oh, yeah. At least reclaiming. If nothing yeah. else, at least reclaiming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, I yeah. actually meant free claiming, not buying. It's, it's, actually, it's, to be, it's, there's nobody buying hex right now. Like, let's just yeah. be honest. There's nobody yeah. buying it. The volume is like nothing. There's a million dollars a day in volume on hex right now. It's it's yeah. microscopic. Nobody's buying it. Yeah, yeah. It's just too bad those guys are missing half their stack. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Too bad for them. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, the yeah, AA's yeah. the AA's pumping it out. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Well, there's just been pumping. distraction also with. All the different experiments of different DApps and things like that that you know uh, utilize the momentum, and I think some of it can be synergistic, some of it can be helpful. Some really, I'm not uh, pro or negative. I'm just commenting that you know, there's always uh, in any experiment. There's like uh, I, I think I, I related in one of my videos is you can have gold the element, and the element may have value, but it also has value because it gets marketed, promoted, converted into jewelry, converted into circuit boards, converted into uh, ornamentation or whatever you use gold for. So the base value you perceive as this 5,000 year history of holding value actually also demands uh, businesses to be built around it, similar to oil. Oil has been in the ground for as long as, you know, longer than human beings have been here. But we transform it through businesses into plastics and, and uh, asphalt and we transport things around the planet using oil. So that you can have something like Hex as an example in this commodity analogy that has intrinsic value because it's malleable. It's you, it's uh, it's a uh, it's able to be utilized uh, by other companies for marketing. Uh, and, and I'm trying to relate that to other things that were like, you know, hourglass kind of games and all of this stuff that was going on before or these clone kind of things. They're just basically trying to uh, suck off the brand uh, identity of uh, of Hex versus building a real business around it. So in a lot of ways, I like what the HXY community has been doing and the the momentum. I still realize that it's centralized. I still realize that it's speculation uh, about a business around a commodity, in my opinion, that Hex is. So I'm trying to relate it those ways. But I've seen positive movement. Um, and I think that also some of the price uh participation in the hex aa or in the uniswap volume has been a little bit distracted with these other uh with the hex business honestly um because i see movement there and a lot of participation in their telegram um very active but uh i, I still see it as a business built on top of the commodity of hex yeah, i think all that volume everything that we're seeing is very natural we just I mean, this is not anything even unnatural in the history of Hex. You know, it pumps a little while, things kind of calm down, they settle down, and uh, they just chill out for a while. And this is just, this is very natural across uh, all cryptocurrencies. This this kind of thing happens. So I think that the fact that we're entering this lull period, I think we're getting really, really close to a bottom. And if we get uh, below 0025, I'll be really surprised. Yeah. So I think RG3 should sell his uh, his Southern California house. I should sell my Northern California property. We should just like triple the price of uh, Hex by buying all the volume. <laughs> <laughs> it only takes a few million bucks to move it, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. You, you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. Yeah. Technically, yeah, but... Uh... <laughs> RG3's like... Oh. <laughs> I've been paying on this motherfucker for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't cheap. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Oh, <laughs> hey, we got somebody rolling in here. Anybody want to let John come in? Yeah, I can. Um, I can. I can. Uh, it's a little later here. I'm on the East Coast, so uh, I'll let oh, some. Good, dude. Hey, Crypto Orange. Thanks for coming hey, on, man. Thanks, so Orange. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thank nice you. Hang out with us. Thank you. Thank you, RG. Great. Appreciate All it. All right, buddy. Hey, man. All right, so John. Let's see here. Let me pull down. Let me pull down orange. Here, bring John up. Yo, yo, yo! yo what's yo. up, John? Beard guy, man. I'm getting jealous. I gotta start growing my beard out again. 
He's got this oh, meticulous beard. Oh, Jim, you got to get on it. <laughs> well, what's up? Oh, yeah, KNTX knows about the, uh, the beard. Man, you'd probably spend more time grooming that than you do your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine used to be like good textures. I need to right. show you my driver's license tomorrow. <laughs> good like texture. Got that damn down. Abraham Lincoln thing going on there, man. With the yeah. cabin He's got the and off everything. The grid beard, man. <laughs> Look, if I if I cut it, we'll stop. We'll stop pumping. I mean, the price won't pump if don't, I cut it. Don't cut it. Don't, <laughs> don't cut, cut it. it. I ain't. I ain't. Yeah. Don't cut like it. like the, <laughs> the thirty. The don't thirty-three the cent prediction top. is like baked into it. Like it's it's it's. it's don't even touch the, it, bro. Get your hands off it. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the thirty-three is coming from. All right, just take care of that thing. Grow that. Only put it where it needs to be. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to cut my hair either. It's all it's all uh, it's all a part of the thirty-three. See, I'm down with that too. I don't want to ever cut, have to cut my hair again. That's why I want to retire. I just want to let it just. Uh, dreads. I want dreads. dreads. There you go. Brilliant. Okay. That's cool. Our safari man. Be like a 60 year old <laughs> surfing, walking on the beach. Dreads. No there shoes. You go. <laughs> Board shorts. A nice, uh, a nice three bedroom house with a pool in my yeah. is around 1600 a month, something like that. Oh. You said my Yeah, my Aguas are in Kong. Oh, oh, nice. I used to live in Sabo a long time ago, yeah. Tim. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, I was there uh, back in the late nineties. What'd you say? Okay, I was there back in the late nineties. Nice. Yeah, what back in Puerto doing? Rico. No, yeah, my I'm dad with... was in the Navy, so I was on Rosie oh. Roads out there before they retired the base. Yeah, that's my VA. That's the one I go to. They actually remodeled it, and it's not, it's a really nice one there. They you got know, the VA remodeled. there. Uh, Rosie Roads. On, oh, on the old base there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, mean, I went to school. Down, the base isn't there anymore. I mean, they're not doing anything active at all except for the va hospital oh, okay i heard they had some sort of ood or something like that on duty to mm -hmm. a certain regard but i'm not sure i can't say that's cool they got a va there that's awesome yeah it's, yeah. Nice. it's a nice remodel that you know they put money into it nice and, uh, gary gary made a really good point earlier i thought about um how little money you actually need you know how you don't actually need millions and millions and millions of dollars to to do well for, I mean, for most people, you know, I guess it, it, it depends, but you know, if, if you own your, if you own your own place, I thought this was fascinating what he was talking about. Cause I've been talking, I've been thinking about this for years. Um, you know, all you really have to do is buy uh, food and uh, electricity and your phone bill and, you know, maybe put some gas in your car. And, you know, if you can do that, you're pretty good. And it doesn't cost that much to do that. I mean, you could actually do all that on a minimum wage salary. If you really, if you really, uh, you know, like a full-time minimum wage salary, if you don't have a rent payment, you can do all that stuff pretty easily. Mm -hmm. It doesn't so take much. It happens between taxation and the cost of where you live, who you're paying for where you live. Well, that's another reason why I'm in Mississippi. It is the cheapest place in the whole country to live. Mm -hmm. Nice, dude. Smart. Very strategic. I play in this place for a long time. I, have, I pay $12 a month to live here. Oh, wow. Damn, that's, that's, that's not bad. bad. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, that is, people that can find uh, a, something they can put their energy into, uh, like three to four months of a year, and they can do the things that they want to do the rest of the year, and they, they are smart that way. They'll have bursts of income production, you know, and then they'll have basically, they're not having to live miserly, but they're basically living the life that they want to live, like uh, you know, travel and things like that. So. Yeah, this this idea that we always have a monthly nut that's a certain amount we have to break uh, isn't necessarily true. It's kind of a self fulfilling. Twelve yeah, you bucks, can do like bro. Twelve bucks. Yeah. I open my <laughs> front door; it cost me twelve fucking dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and that's how I planned it. You know, I planned a long time because I like to be able to do this stuff that we're doing right now and study cryptocurrencies and study hex and stuff like that. Like, I would rather do that than live in a super expensive apartment in um you know falls church virginia i would rather i would rather live someplace like i am right now and be able to have the freedom to do whatever the heck i want and mm -hmm. so i pay taxes you know i have to pay twelve dollars a month um taxes and that's that's it the whole place is you know i, I paid for everything that's awesome nice, man. Such, a, such a good and if people learn those things in a 
so many things in the United States, uh, especially, but other countries as well, is all about consumerism. And that if you're not over leveraged and basically competing with your perceived neighbor, then you don't feel you feel uh, uh, depressed or you feel like you're not meeting, you know, what's expected of you either on your own ex own standard or on other people putting standards on you. And I think that kind of this self-reliance thing, I, I hope that this comes back after this COVID business and all this stuff like that, that people kind of feel like, hey, you know, I don't really need to, again, not to be miserly, but to say, to feel self-fulfilled because you grew your own vegetables, because you built your own addition to your house. You, you, you know, this, this capability thing, I hope that this has a resurgence uh, in the next 10, 15 years where people don't have to be so dependent on everybody else delivering some service or good to them. Yeah. And it might be, it might come from economic necessity because yeah. mm -hmm. if, um, you know, the economy doesn't seem on paper to be doing that great. And if it, uh, if it continues to unfold the way it is now, and uh, I don't, I don't know that it's certain that we're going to go into a depression. I don't really think so, to be honest, but if we did, um, I think that it would make a lot of people try to go back to the old ways of uh, trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient just for the simple reason of it's cheaper. Yeah. True. It might, out of necessity, think, it might happen. <laughs> you think of all the guys that went through World War II or before World War II and then afterwards, this utility of, you know, every, every person I know that was born in the 40s and 50s, uh, they had their garage made into a little workshop they built or made anything that was needed around the house. You know, they yeah. were resourceful and they, they would, you know, they didn't have to, ha I mean, it just, what my grandparents, my parents did as well um, was just more of a self-reliant culture. And again, I grew up in Texas, much be a little bit different than the coasts, but uh, yeah. I miss yeah and, it, and it's still like that to a degree here. Um, in the in the south where i'm at just um just among especially the older people mm -hmm. there it's amazing to me how thrifty they are like they do not throw anything away um you know i'll have things like especially tools that may be broken you know sometimes i'll just be like hey you want this and they'll look at me sideways like i'm crazy <laughs> they're like what do you mean or what are you doing with this they're like you know this is worth a lot and they'll just take it off of me and, and you know they'll be happy for it the reason mm -hmm. being is because they're uh, their ancestors that they knew when they were growing up did grow up in the Great Depression. And the Great Depression down here was, uh, from what I understand, it was, it was it, it wasn't actually as bad as it was in the cities because here everyone for so long has already been accustomed to growing their own food and things like that. I mean, I can't drive two minutes around here without seeing a massive home garden. I mean, they're everywhere. People, mm -hmm. people still grow their own food down here to this day. And uh, yep. people have historically been farmers and things like that. So I don't think the great depression really hit uh, down here that hard, but people have also been a lot slower to adopt to the new lifestyles. You know, people aren't as dependent on all the, on all the new stuff. I mean, people out here, you know, where I'm at, uh, that, that we're still getting our uh, water out of holes in the ground. You know, that's just that's just how people have been doing it out here for so long. They never changed. Yep. Do you go hunting? Good texture. Do you go hunting? I don't personally any. I haven't lately. Like I've been deer hunting before and things like that. Um, okay. There's squirrels everywhere. You know, if, if for some reason the uh, supermarket runs out of food, you know, I've got enough squirrels <laughs> around here to last for a long time. It tastes like chicken. <laughs> some fallout style <laughs> yeah and i got this i got this bird gun behind me this uh this well, that bird gun no that is actually a 12 gauge shotgun and uh that 12 gauge will yeah that 12 gauge the the, the i took the i took some of the other ones somewhere else but that that 12 gauge <laughs> that 12 gauge will um do the job yeah well, that's not going to do anything trying to get yourself squirrels though man <laughs> well, I mean, that's what that's what birdshot is for. You get you get birdshot, you get birdshot in one of those, and you shoot right. it from twenty yards. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You oh, kill yeah. four squirrels. Yeah, right. might have to pick some BBs out of your food, but hey. Well, I got right. I got I got steel shot for that, just okay. in case it does leave any BBs in it. So, and I don't I don't like to shoot. I don't shoot lead on my land yeah. unless um, unless I have like 
this much wood to collect the ammo because I'm eventually I want to have like cows and you know pigs mm -hmm. and uh, goats and all that kind of stuff and I don't want them. I've I've already read the studies. You know, there's not a lot of lead uptake uh, into grass, um, but I, I just don't want to have lead. You know, this stuff's toxic. I don't want it all over my land. Mm -hmm. I don't want it getting into the water. I don't want it. None of this stuff. So I, I collect all of it. But I got this. I got the steel shot for that. I'd rather shoot steel. The steel is not yeah. toxic. Yeah. Well, John and I, wanted, I are in a very uh, rural part of Colorado, and so we're right. we've got it's very trendy here for people. You guys to be know their each own. other? Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be one of my yeah. new agents. So that's <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so it's very trendy here. Uh, if if all the damn Californians would stop buying up all the property around here. No, great. no, no. Let them keep coming, man. Let them keep coming. Actually, just to let you know, they're, they're not really Californians. They're transplants from somewhere else. Nobody is really from California. Yeah, that's true. They're all from somewhere else. and That and really they, is true. They they live there for a couple of years and then over, sell their overpriced houses and then drive a bar housing market here in Colorado. Yeah, I that's, mean that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, that's I what my my family did the same thing. They moved out there, you know, the uh, Castle Rock area and, and uh -huh. out in that area. And then I've got family out in Fort Collins, but yeah, they all they all left here and went over there, you know. But they can have that shithole. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got a lot of restrictions over there in Colorado, though. Y'all got it. Didn't used of, to be that way. It's not like that anymore. Be, no, it used. It didn't used to be that way. It oh. is now. Yeah. You guys I, got I, that cold white shit in the winter too. You can have. It's that nice. Shit. The fluffy oh. pow pow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like it's I a nice cool, fluffy pow pow. It, it's a really <laughs> cool state, but like the 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 restrictions are just amazingly. Like you can't even collect your own water over there. You can now. Well, it's just like you, you can, can you now. Can. It's it's yeah. a little bit different. Uh, about like four years ago yeah okay. like in california you can't you can't collect your own water um that's they'll crazy. find you that's they crazy. will definitely find you but it's a little bit better out here on the western slope where we're at um it's not as bad it's not uh as don't tell them where we're at don't tell them hey, about a, our little honey a hole big, here bro that's a big spot it's a big spot <laughs> it is hey, horrible uh, here it's horrible hey, <laughs> life sucks let me answer some <laughs> let me answer some quick questions before we get to into the freaking California hate here. Um, <laughs> I I don't care, really. I don't because I love this fucking place, man. It's I miss so... California, to be honest with you. I used to live in uh, Temecula. Oh shit! Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's where I was at before I came out. That's here. Right, it's right by the RG threes. So. Is that the other Karen neighborhood next to RG's Karen? Yeah, that's the, the Karens. <laughs> yeah. Like that's where the Karens live in in Temecula. All sorts of Karens <laughs> and my town. <laughs> So, so, uh, let's see, I, I, I saw something in here. Um, how much, uh, where did it go? Doggone it. I started scrolling and I screwed myself up, but, uh, let's see what else is in here. How many coins should one try to hold? There you go. How many coins should one try to hold? Yeah. Get you a million, bro. Get you a million. There's no, I mean, you should be able to get a million if you're in America. Yeah. You should be able to catch a million. I, I mean, I, I, my, the the obvious question is as many as you can freaking handle, right? Mm -hmm. As many as you can get your hands on to. Yeah, yeah. Before big payday. Um, What's a million? Was that around what four grand, five grand? What is that? No, it's like three. It's like it's three like grand. Three right, right now. I think today's yeah. even a bit. Didn't we have a big dip today? Didn't we have a dip today? No, we had a little really. bit of a dip. Not much, it, but it was like, kind, of, kind of going down, but. Like when you zoom out, everything that we think is a big dip is like microscopic. There's, uh, there's. I wasn't on the fifteen minute. I was on like a one hour. I thought I saw something. No, if you scroll, scroll out, scroll out, <laughs> scroll out to the daily. If you come out to the daily, it hasn't moved. Yeah, it hasn't moved. It's it's sideways. It, it, it did. We did have a little a little scam wick like a few hours yeah. ago. That yeah. went down, you know, a little wiki wiki. But you know, these little these these twenty or thirty million dollar coin uh, sells on Uniswap, they're they're not really moving the price that much. They're pretty they're pretty tiny. You Any see that? You see that wick there? We we had one dropped into the deuce. It was like two nine. Was it okay? Yeah. So it had a little. A, we had a little. We had a little dip action today. That's a, that's a good buy spot. But you know, folks that are talking about wanting to. You know how much should they get? It's also dependent on how they want to stake. You know, if somebody has a whole lot of time and they're fine staking, you know, you stake a million coins for fifteen years, you're probably going to get a hundred million coins out of it, at least. Wow. There's some oscillations that's happening between HXY and Hex, also. 
because of uh, V2 and their liquidity before they had liquidity on version one of like 20,000 bucks. Now they have liquidity of about half a million. So you're seeing oscillations between hex dump, you know, even if you don't call it a dump, but it comes down to, like you said, 0.29. And then that amp that goes into HXY and then that price will oscillate up just like sloshing a tub. And that price will oscillate up, and then you'll see it moves and sells off and comes back into hex. So you, you'll see, I think you'll see oscillation as they as they participate in their culture too. So not to get all all numero- numerological on you. No, let's GT, let's get numerological. But I'm I did what you said. I'm looking at the chart right now, so I'm I'm stretched out and looking at the chart. Is this about May thirteenth? From all time highs. From all time highs. This is the third dip below three. Ooh. Third <laughs> dip wow. below three. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying. Uh, if you look at the ETH chart, it's the third well, dip. What do you see as the the all time high on the ETH chart? Um, the all time high on the ETH chart is. Uh, it's three 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 two seven six six five <laughs> six five nine five. No way, man. No, no, no. Wait, you're that, telling me there's that you're, tell, you're there's telling that me the all time high on the ETH chart was oh 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 three three three. Wow. No, on the ETH. Wait, oh, wait oh, you're telling on me ETH. on the ETH. And, you know, it's, and, uh, and, and, top and you're and you're telling me that that happened on May the thirteenth. 2020 it sure did it and you're sure telling me did. and you're telling me that the coin bottomed on january the 4th the 33rd day after launch <laughs> wow wait 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 that. yeah but 30 so. 33 cents this year is, is crazy though <laughs> <laughs> Woo, you gotta be crazy <laughs> i'm just i'm just looking at it. i'm just i'm just Pattern. trying to stay in line with Pattern. the breeze man so is that 33 cents on July 33rd. <laughs> <laughs> July 33rd. On a leap year. <laughs> I got to quit. I got to I got to hush myself or I'm going to start spilling the beans on everything. Oh, come on, man. This is the place the to do future. it. You know good textures from How the much code have you read? You said do you what? read the code every single, you said you you said you read the uh, hex code every single day, right? I've I've looked into it. it you know, I, I'll be honest. I don't understand all of it. Like, I don't even read the Bitcoin claiming code anymore. I don't care. I don't read it. Mm-hmm. I'm over it. The Bitcoin claiming code is it's just it it doesn't really matter that much, you know, because I'm I'm not claiming Bitcoins with it, and it's going to go away. It's not even it's going to be a dead portion of code mm-hmm. uh, after the big payday. It's just going to be dead. So it's like I don't even put any effort into trying to understand it. I, I, I think to be honest, it's like the most useless portion of X. I mean, it really, who is it really onboarding? What has it really done as far as momentum? Um, mm-hmm. Other yeah. than saying, hey, I'm giving it free to, to you know, Bitcoin holders, really. And it goes away and their, their stakes actually mean nothing to us. So really, Bitcoin holders and, and big Bitcoin wells don't mean shit because – Anybody who could put a couple of ETH in, you know, ended up with bigger bags than most of them did, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many how many millions was that, like, 1,500 the other day worth? <laughs> it wasn't, yeah. wasn't worth but a couple million, right? It was, yeah. like, 3 million, I think. 3 million? 12, 1,300, yeah. Well, because they only get, ha- they only got, what, what, what was it, less than half of their bag. So, that's yeah. why it was only 3 million. So, in the scheme of things, I mean, other than it pumps the... It, it, it does pump our brand our, awareness. Our, it's a premium. Um, yeah. Well, and it helps our uh, um, it helps our big payday for the virality. Yeah, the the big the virality bonus or whatever uh, mm-hmm. ch- it changes. So that so that's hey. about the good thing about it, I guess. And and y'all know they launched the they launched it on December the third. Third. <laughs> oh, here's 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 one for you. Here's one for you. Get texture. 33 cents, 33 days before big payday. Uh, hey, good what's, what's, okay, wait, do the math. <laughs> what's 33 days before big payday? Where do that's we like the up? That's like the 16th of October. Mm-hmm. Guys, 16th. wasn't it also like the 33rd day on the adoption amplifier that we had like the 1.8 million per Yeah, uh, the per biggest day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys mentioned that already, but I remember looking back at the, uh, 
the stakes that I put in and being pretty happy on that day. Yeah, the biggest day ever. And, you know, something somebody uh, responded on that article. It, by the way, I wrote an article that has a lot of this um, esoteric stuff in it. I put it on Steam. It. If y'all haven't seen it, it's sticky on my Twitter. I think it's cool because I wrote it. But y'all might want to check it out. Um, <laughs> I'll check it out somebody, right now. Yeah, somebody commented on this article, and I thought it was pretty cool, that they think that something is going to happen during the third month of the third quarter of this year. I thought that was interesting. Third month of the third quarter. Hmm. Yeah, third month of the third quarter is going to be September. So I thought that was that was interesting. Hmm. But right. it, I don't know how um, applicable that'll be because 2020 itself doesn't have <laughs> a lot of that. That doesn't have a lot of three. Well, any, multiply it doesn't three. have a lot of anything in it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of riots. Anyway. There's a lot of riots <laughs> in Seattle over here, man. Oh my god, dude! It's pretty- you know who uh, we should talk to somebody that uh, has connections with Chinese miners because before they sell their Bitcoin, after they mine it, they still could have claimed. Well, I guess they wouldn't have bags. Yeah, who wouldn't have already have bags? Who wouldn't, who wouldn't have anything though? Hmm. That's like crypto mafia over there, dude. I mean, that's like you don't talk to those people. Yeah, but they're I gamblers. Do- they're they're gamblers. They're going to speculate. It's still, it's still billions of people. <laughs> Regardless, it's still billions of people. Uh, I was yeah, talking about the mining, the mining up, the mining uh, um, yeah. community. Those guys are, those are some cutthroats over there, man. I remember Richard saying, "Yeah, those the miners don't." Yeah, when was the last time you heard from a miner from China? They don't really talk. They don't care. They don't care about. I, I talked to. I was uh, criticizing some Bitcoin miners on uh, on Twitter a couple about a month or two ago, and. I was criticizing one of the largest miners in China and they like came out of their woodwork. And, you know, normally when you, when you talk about like an organization or a large professional organization or an incorporation or something like that, um, they come out and they send out their most professional people and they're really nice. And they're like trying to calm you down and stuff like that. These people weren't like that. They were just pretty much, just going toe to toe with me, like acting, acting like any normal, re- regular old Twitter user. Hmm. Hmm. Well, they don't have to worry about customer service. <laughs> yeah. All they got to do is worry about dumping on your head, so they can keep mining another paying, day. Paying that electric bill, baby. Yep. Paying that electric <laughs> bill. Yep. Uh, all right, fellas. Yeah. Well, I'm getting ready to shut this puppy down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody Good got textures any- okay with that? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Good texture. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to reading your article, man. I'm gonna do that after the stream. Yeah. Right. Yeah. By the way, yeah, very, very, very good man. job. Appreciate that. Very good job on that article, bro. That was a good one, man. I like hey, that. appreciate oh, that. Released while the stream was going on, but Crypto Coffee just released about an hour long or 45 minute long, uh, and it's uh, all about onboarding. So it's really an outreach good. to people aren't in crypto. Nice. nice. Good. Good. He's the one to do it too. right now. He's yeah, the one to do it. He's got him. great content, and he's he's been mm-hmm. MIA for for a few days. I, I haven't haven't talked to him in about a week. So, I, have you ever had I, him on? What's that? Have you ever had him on here? He'd be a good person. Oh to yeah. Be on here. Oh he's yeah. Been he's been on. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 we've had him on a lot. I you knew he was on the twenty four hour stream, but yeah. You know, Brian. The funny thing is, when you go through that article, um, it's got some some interesting astrological features in it, and then uh, hexologist being the good journalist that he was. He, when he was talking to uh, Richard today, uh, he he was able to spur Richard into saying that basically he didn't say this verbatim, but he basically said astrology was garbage. I thought that was hilarious. He, he <laughs> yeah. first he says yeah. first he says that his favorite number is thirty three, <laughs> and then he pretends like he doesn't know what the number thirty uh, thirteen is. He's like, I think I saw a football player with a number thirteen once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and, you know, he's a good man, and he doesn't want to get too close to the devil. You know. Yeah, he's from what I understand, he has a history in poker also, and don't don't uh, don't poker players. It, it didn't. It, am I making that up? Doesn't because he talks about poker a lot, so I'm assuming he I has a. Talking about that, yeah. Yeah, he talks about poker all the time, so I'm assuming he has a poker past, and you know, poker players are notorious for for bluffing. So he goes from from having a favorite number of 33 to 13 means nothing, and then uh, 
he's got all these these uh ritual ritualistic looking candles all over his house while yeah. he says <laughs> while he's he's obviously performing some type of rituals in his house with different the colored name candles Come on. I mean, yeah dude. he names his coin hex <laughs> and then and then he talks about saturn that was amazing he talked about in the video today he talked about how much he loves saturn and like he was like getting all sarcastic about it talking about how how he wanted to start relaying hex transactions on saturn it was amazing and then he said uh and then he said astrology was garbage so it's 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 a funny guy <laughs> our decisions were conspiracy theorists that have lost our minds right yeah. uh, right we're out of this world <laughs> you guys you guys are all something else man i pre it, it gives me something to to smile about when i get off this thing <laughs> Ooh, I yes. love all you guys. All right, man. Well, I'm going to shut it all down. Thanks. Cool. Brian, Fanatics. <sighs> all hey, right, guys. John, guys. come back on when you can stay a little longer. And Yeah, uh, man. Get on a little I earlier. I appreciate later. it. And, uh, Jim, thanks, all, as always, man. Sergeant at Arms, good texture. Thanks, bro. Yeah, Mike bro. Wayne, I don't know where he went. I saw, I, I, I he's guess in the chat. He's, he's probably drank too much wine now. And he doesn't want to <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, have a good see one. Have a great weekend, easy, and uh, we'll see you guys all on Monday. All right? Catch you later. Hey, take care, y'all. See you guys. Bye. Bye.